Greeting from Ukraine! At least we have real snow and today we had snow playing with Marianne, with my son and as you see still we have uh, Christmas time <laughs> and fairy trees because uh, yesterday uh, we had uh, the old new year and the old new year means uh, <laughs> According to Orthodox tradition, we have uh, New Year on the 14th of January. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about Slavs, about our ancestor Slavic people. Uh, the problem with Slavs is that uh, we have many legends, we have many myths about them, but actually we don't have much uh, uh, writing sources about them, but uh, the last uh, 20, 14, ye uh, 40 years, uh, archaeologists uh, work on uh, Slavic um, dwellings, Slavic settlements, uh, they dug uh, Slavic things, and at least we got archaeologists, hist historians who can explain a bit about history, how they live, how they uh, communicate with other people according to archaeology. Uh, this uh, guy is uh, this one. <laughs> uh, he look a bit uh, as uh, some, I don't know, teenager, as um, a rock player, <laughs> a rock band, but he is a teacher in uh, Cherkasy in Kiev University, the main university of Ukraine and he is the the main the main specialist in slavic history uh, just he can explain to you very simple about uh, their life his name is Yevgen Sinitsa <laughs> actually i didn't knew about him but last time i asked my group mate about uh, slavic people and he um, uh, introduced me this uh, uh, teacher from university and I was very glad to see him, to see um, his video. He explained the history very well and very simple. <laughs> so um, this is a great example how can uh, um, teach <laughs> history. Uh, so okay, um, let's start. Uh, so where Slavic people live? It's the big question. In the Soviet time, in uh, my school time, we learned that Slavic people came somewhere from the Baltic country, from the north of Germany, modern Germany, from the north, and they came here, they immigrated to Ukraine, about uh, two centuries AD. <laughs> but now archaeologists found more and more sources that these people, uh, they were local actually. <laughs> uh, the main places where they uh, first live, it was the north of Ukraine, uh, so-called uh, called Polisia uh, zone, there are the big forest region. <laughs> Um, as you know, Chernobyl, our Chernobyl, Chernobyl tragedy. So Chernobyl is exactly in this place, in Polisa. They occupied part of Ukraine, Belarus, and part of Russia, and some part of the East Poland. So it was quite small area where they used to live. And actually, archaeologists. Um, have an idea that they can live there for many, many years, probably from the, I don't know, <laughs> uh, from uh, first, uh, thousand, uh, first um, millennium BC, but uh, the real roots of Slavic we came from um, Kiev, so-called Kiev culture, Kiev cu culture, the people who lived there in the first, second century AD. So we knew that they were Slavs. Uh, the problem with Slavic is that we don't have much uh, writing, we don't have much script about them. Uh, 
uh, the first time when the historian started to talk about Slavic uh, were 6th uh, century AD. <laughs> These people live in the forest. They live far away from civilization. Uh, the <laughs> uh, some um, mm, intellectual centers, some mm, I don't know uh, Roman Empire center. It was seven hundred kilometers from them in Crimea, Greek settlements where people can write and can read. Yeah, can explain. But why we started to knew about them why uh, byzantine roman uh, um, historian started to write about slavic people in 6th century ad uh, it was the big period of migration many people many nobles came from the east to the west and they moved past ukraine on their way uh, these people live uh, in the steppe region. They moved and moved, and mostly they didn't stay long in Ukraine. They move away to uh, modern Hungary, for example, uh, example, and they stay there, or they move to the area of uh, France and there are others. <laughs> so it was province. Uh, here live poor people. Uh, so um, like like today, we have many. Uh, immigrants, uh, many refugees from the east. Sometimes tourists who come here, they ask me why you haven't much uh, Arabians, why you haven't much uh, dark people. I told that they are not interested in Ukraine, they are interested in France, in England, they are interested in the West Europe. <laughs> so like these people, many year, uh, 2000 years ago, Nomads uh, try to be close to Roman Empire because Roman Empire it was the rich civilization with uh, gold, with uh, treasures, uh, not like poor Slavic people. The second sources about Slavic people was special instruction uh, that was given to Byzantine army how to fight against Slavic people. <laughs> Byzantine Empire and Roman Empire, they fought against uh, uh, barbarian <laughs> and they knew how to fight against Gothic people, how to fight against Slavic people, because all these people were different. So, according to this extraction, they told, guys, if you fight have a raid against Slavs, you should uh, demolish them completely, you should burn everything there, you should kill their um, uh, little guy <laughs> because they can grow and fight against you, you should burn their um, corn, uh, their grain because they have much grain <laughs> and they uh, survive uh, because of their corn. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you um, don't wipe them out, they just come to you and uh, burn uh, you and rob, started to rob you. So, according to this source, uh, slave people were very resourceful, resourceful, resourceful people. Actually, these people don't need much... Uh, uh, <laughs> much for survive, much for living. This um, uh, till now, till now, for example, many people think that uh, Ukrainians are very surviving people. They can survive in any situation. <laughs> yeah. Now we have many workers who work in. Uh, uh, yeah, European Union uh, and uh, they really don't need much <laughs> they just in money and um, after my university when I uh, finished my university I with my friend decided to go to Western Union it was very difficult in the time because we need visa the Spanish embassy gave us gave visa to us and we were so happy that we didn't we even didn't think how we can 
travel there almost without money. <laughs> But it was really, really great experience because for two weeks and a half we travel around Spain, Italy, France, Poland, Hungary. Actually, we visited about six, seven countries of the Europe, and we spent about I think three hundred euro for our trip. We travel by plane, by bus, uh, walking, uh, high uh, heat hiking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and really we didn't need much. Uh, we slept just in Barcelona on the bench. Uh, once we uh, stay for night uh, just on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea <laughs> in some uh, Pueblo. So it was really, really very interesting experience that people don't have much for their life, uh, just uh, to be happy and enjoy their life. So I think the slang people think the same because they keep a modest life, simple life. They live in forest. In forest they have sometimes terrible weather, uh, sometimes rain, sometimes it was cold. This area where they used to live uh, called Polisia. Polisia is like forest region. There is a damned forest. And uh, if you have been in Chernobyl or you listen about Chernobyl, this Ukrainian catastrophe, uh, Ukrainian um, when the uh, Ukrainian station, how it's called, um, nuclear station, Bjorn in, in Spire, and now there are many tourists, so they exactly live there in this forest. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Chernobyl spoiled this area, and hope in the future it will be better so these people had small dwellings their dwellings their houses were just four by four meters <laughs> it's about 60 square meters room like mine <laughs> yeah and they uh, live there are sometimes uh, like a big family uh, sometimes these houses were smaller than human height uh, it had uh, they had uh, no ceiling uh, just roof <laughs> so just in the center you can stay straight <laughs> there are, uh, near one of the wall they have stone 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 um, stone sto stone <laughs> for fire a yeah, place for fire and even they, these houses had no smoking pipes. All the smokes that came from the stove uh, go inside of their houses. So it was like... <laughs> but for them it's okay. They uh, fire their stone and after um, all these stone stones gave them warm. So they are houses became warmer because of the uh, stone st stone 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but during the summer they had uh, stones uh, uh, stones just near their houses it's for like summer stone uh, so do, they don't need to fire make fire inside of their houses they make it near by outside mm -hmm. so Actually, these people had simple life. They didn't need something comfortable <laughs> like uh, Roman people. Roman people uh, exactly in that time had uh, uh, their floor with um, hidden floor. Yeah, <laughs> they have hidden inside of their floors. And probably they could live like this uh, for a long time. But in 6th century AD, Another group of uh, tribes, wild tribes, uh, migrated from the east. These tribes uh, had name Avars. And I don't know, probably Slavic people tried to run away from Avars. Maybe they cooperated with them and uh, go to Gaza, went to Gaza to the west. But uh, in 6th century AD, some group of uh, Slavic people moved to Balkan. Balkan. <laughs> so how Slavic uh, appeared on the Balkan. Now these people are um, 
Bulgarian, Macedonian, part of Macedonia, Serbian, <laughs> but all of them have uh, Slavic uh, roots. So um, actually, why why Slavic and another tribe uh, uh, moved to move to the Western Europe? In that time, in sixth century A.D., climate climate became changed. Climate uh, got colder. Like like today, today, yeah, today we tell about uh, global warming. Many politicians, many people explain it as uh, we have ecology catastrophe. That's this because uh, human uh, people uh, um, do bad things for ecology, but the climate is very changeable. Uh, changeable probably because uh, the, our planets uh, moved uh, around uh, moved um, around the sun and uh, it's got different uh, uh, energy from the sun sometimes it's called um, sometimes more sometimes less uh, so it look like when the cl climate become warmer um, our planet got much energy sun energy from the from the sun that is why it's become warmer not because the econ <laughs> ecological catastrophe uh, so it's um, the climate become colder in different different period for example in 6th century in 6th century AD in the 13th century in the 17th century 18th century it became colder it's a change every seven, six um, hundred years. For example, in the uh, 13th century, when uh, uh, the weather became colder, Mongolians came to Ukraine, came here. Uh, so the weather made um, wild tribes moved so avarians moved here and slavic people also moved uh, far away they moved not only to balkans to the east but also they moved to russia that is why um slavic people spread much uh, during that time during just 200 years uh, when slavic people created their state you know that's the most uh, you know that slavic people tried to created their state many times probably they uh, created uh, their state when uh, they need to defend them from the enemies in the 6th century is known the first slavic state anti anti um, uh, the state of the anti antis but it survived during the short time because um, Avars destroy the state. Um, also, they tried to, to create it in the uh, during the eighth and ninth century, and just uh, in the ninth century, they created the big. They started to create the big state called Kyrus. <laughs> it was really, really uh, the big, uh, the big state. Uh, what do we know about uh, Slavic Slavic things, about Slavic items like treasures? In the picture that I give you, there are uh, pictures of the uh, human figures, uh, golden plaques. Uh, these people, this man who dance some ritual dance, yeah. Uh, so these uh, figures were um, found in the treasures in Trakasi region, in my tr uh, region, 100 years ago, on the ground, in the, in the ground. <laughs> so this treasure connect with um, uh, Slavic people who live in 6th century AD, and probably it belonged to some uh, Slavic, uh, Slavic king, Slavic warrior. Probably he grabbed this treasure from Byzantine Empire because many items from 
uh, this treasure uh, were, were made uh, by Byzantine um, craftsmen, by Roman craftsmen. Uh, but these figures uh, of the dancing men are really mystical because uh, in other place archaeologists fa found and um, people didn't found something like this. So probably this is special gods. Slavic were pagans people who dance for their goddess or like this. <laughs> what I would like to say in conclusion. As I say, as uh, this uh, professor <laughs> from university, from Kiev University at all, uh, Slavic people were local people. They kept simple life. In the 6th century AD, they moved to Balkan region. In such way, Slavic people appeared on the Balkans. They took part in uh, battle with Byzantine Empire. Sometimes they served for Byzantine army. That is why Byzantine historian knew about them. They had military leader. They tried to create their state, but really big state. Um, they create just say in the 9th century AD. They uh, all these state states that they try to create paid the way to Kiev Rus, the big state uh, that's were created by Slavic people, probably apart by Vikings in the 9th century AD. And this is uh, the next um, topic uh, for my <laughs> for my video. Uh, so I hope uh, see you next Friday. Uh, hello, Eric. It's always a good day when I stumble across one of your videos. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Eric. <laughs> I try my best to explain you. Uh, as uh, far as my English uh, allow me to do, <laughs> I try to improve it and really I appreciate that you wa watch me because it's really, really great experience for me to talk uh, to you. So hope to see you next week and probably one, once I will see you here in Ukraine after this coronavirus period. So I see you and have a good weekend.